All right, guys, thanks for hopping on um, our agency call. Got a super, I'm excited about this one. Um, got Matt Borsch from FFL Inception getting on here to share some some wisdom on kind of what he's doing virtually selling insurance. Uh, Matt, can you hear me okay? Can, yeah. Cool, bro. Well, first off, thanks thanks for getting on here. Um, I've been wanting to get you on for a while just because, you know, I've, I've seen you, you guys are doing some pretty big things. You guys are growing pretty quick. Um, but mainly you're selling hundred percent remotely, correct? All virtual. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of it's over zoom, right? Yeah, if, if it can be, it is. Yeah. I, I, I prefer in person, but I need to see you. If I can see you at all, <laughs> I want to see you. So yeah, I, I put everyone on zoom, even if I have to wait five minutes for them to figure it out. I'm going to sure. do that unless it's just, you know, there's some clients that you're lucky to, that they have a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I understand that. Um, well, cool. I'll, we'll get into that. But for, you know, we got some new agents on here, people that may not know who you are. Um, you want to just give people, you know, a quick run run by of what you were doing before this, when you got started with FFL and kind of where you're at now. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you having me on. Um, so I started uh, July 2020. Um, made the classic mistake that we're all sick of hearing, biggest regret, didn't start recruiting soon enough. I waited like seven months to even really consider it. <laughs> So uh, made that classic mistake, but uh, started July 2020, um, did two, 230 for the first six months, um, did 570 last year, a um, little over 200 this year. Um, and then the team did um, 3.2 last year, um, goal of 10 mil Hall of Fame this year. Cool. And right now we're, we're doing about uh, 600. And in June, we did 658. Um, August, we're expecting a big pop. We got a lot of things coming along, but, uh, but yeah. And right around, you said about 60, 67 agents rolling with you? Yep. Cool. Cool, man. So I want to I want to talk a little bit about kind of what you're doing, because it's impressive to, to sell that much insurance right over the phone from the comfort of your office, from home, wherever you, wherever you got to be, wherever you have a computer, right? Absolutely. Um, what, um, what types of leads are you able to run that kind of volume on over For Zoom? Sure. I, I'm not too picky. I'll take any kind of mortgage lead that I can take. Call in, fresh, second chance. I'm, I, I love working with those types of leads. It just, uh, it, it clicks for me. Um, I started on final expense, Facebook type of stuff. Did that a lot in the field, supplemented there. And then when I went all virtual, um, I'm able to get uh, those type of leads on the phone a little easier. So that's that's pretty much what I stick to for now. Got it. And with now, are you, I know some people have dialers. Do you dial all yourself or what does that look like? For sure. Yeah. So I dial a little bit myself now. Um, I started using a dialer, I'd say towards the beginning of this year. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been, it's been me for a while. I was in the field for the first year and a half. And then I transitioned to virtual earlier this year. Um, and then, so I dial myself and then have a dialer to help me as well. I'd say about mm, 70, 30 or so. Okay. Favoring dialer. And cause one thing that I've noticed, you know, selling over the phone, I'm, I'm curious on your opinion too, but you know, you usually have a, a lower show ratio talking oh, yeah. to clients. Okay. What what are some of the things that you and your dialer do to to get people on the books? You know, whether it's a reminder, right, reminder text message, link to the Zoom. Like, what does that process look like to get them in front of you when you're ready to talk to them? Absolutely, yeah. So I try to tie it down really strong, just like you do in the field. You know, hey, I'm driving a white Mazda, I'm six foot, blonde hair, blue eye, discount Leonardo DiCaprio. Where's your house numbers? You know, trying to get him to laugh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I do that. I take that same approach. But hey, have you ever used Zoom before? No. OK, yeah. What, did you just miss out on COVID then or something? You know, just make some dumb joke about why they don't know what Zoom is or something like that. Um, but try to get him to laugh. But I'm just kind of um, making sure I tie it down extra long. Uh, not taking for granted that, you know, they're going to be able to hop on from anywhere. It's like, no, you're going to need to be at home so we can focus and get this knocked out. So I don't have to keep bugging you about it. Um, and then from there, it's um, I use Calendly. So I'll I'll put it straight into Calendly when I book it. And then I set it up to where uh, they'll get an immediate text message um, and then an hour before and then 10 minutes before. 
a follow-up text message. Um, it's still, it still, it doesn't solve all your problems. My show rate's about, uh, about 40%, 35, 40%, um, but you can just book, book so many more when the country is, <laughs> is open to you and, uh, and you don't have to drive between them. So, so it all works out. Got it. What is on average, I mean, how many appointments do you usually run a week or when I say appointments, what do you consider an appointment? For sure. I'm, I'm considering an appointment. If they agree to the appointment, I put it on the calendar. Um, okay. I, I don't know if you, is that what you meant or? Yes. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I don't really do one call closes too much. Um, okay. typically I'm trying, unless they're single and, and I feel like I can, like, I can just knock it out there, but typically I like them to be focused on it. Um, like if, even if they're single, if they're at work, their, their mind's all over the place. And, and I want to make sure that, you know, we're not getting to that, that think about it. Like, oh yeah, I'll call you back. Like, no, you won't. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, no, I'm booking appointments ahead of time and I'm shooting for 30 a week, 30 a week on the yep. calendar. Yep. What is it in terms of lead spend to get there? So I know you're, you're probably doing, you're probably on BPLs, mail drops, you know, scooping age mail in there. What yeah, do you, I've, I've played around with it a lot. Um, it's, it's been about the same, um, but I transitioned a lot more recently with what mortgage has been doing. I transitioned to um, BPLs a lot more. So that way you're not paying for a low return. Um, and then supplementing with second chance mortgage. Because again, when you have you know so many states available, it doesn't really matter what, what county it is or what state it is for the most part, you're just, you're able to go anywhere. And so I'm not being too picky. I'll just look at high, high return BPL counties and then grab a ton of those. I've probably got like 30 or something of those. And then a couple second chance mortgage vendors that I'll hit up if I need to. But I, you got to spend 2000 a week. At least it's the same there. And then typically I'm around 2000 to 2500 a week. Okay. And how much usually, I mean, what's your, how much you usually write in a month? For sure. Yeah. I'm about 35 to 40 a month with what I'm doing. Yeah. So you're, I mean, you're spending, you know, eight to 10 to write. 30, 40, I'm gonna do that all day. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm not, I want to hit Hall of Fame this year, but I'm not, I'm not looking to beat my record or anything. I just want to keep, keep leading from the front, keep the business, you know, <laughs> going forward. Um, we do a live dial group. So I try to be on that uh, pretty much all day um, to help people on there, coaching them if they're dialing or if they're, if they're doing appointments as well. So sure. What was the biggest um, change, you know, coming out of, coming out of the field in terms of in-person appointments to, to switching to over the phone. Like, you know, I mean, my opinion, I, I'm curious about you too, because I like selling insurance, you know, face-to-face -face, person, Agreed. person, look them in the eye, see them. Yep. Um, I do like the convenience of selling over the phone. I like being able to, to help people in five different States in a day. Right. Yep. But you do have um, lack of credibility, if you will, lack of trust, over the phone. Could you talk a little bit about some of the things you do to overcome those types of obstacles? Hey, social security number, banking information, like what do you do to, to help verify your, yourself and credit, you know, give yourself credibility? Absolutely. Yeah. So a um, couple of things there. First of all, I always start off just like I do the in-home building credibility. I'll just, um, I've got a screen that I share. I don't really use a presentation really, but at the beginning I've got that state license and then my driver's license. And then I share the screen and I'll just leave it up there until they say something <laughs> like, Hey guys, I just get it started here. Let's get rolling. Here's my credentials on the left. You've got my, you know, Indiana state license. Well, you know, I'm certified by the state to have this conversation with you, help you guys with the coverage today and talk through everything. And then you see my name and address there in the middle. And over here on the right, you've got my ugly face on my driver's license staring at you with my name and address there that matches as well. And I'll just stop and let them take a screenshot or like acknowledge that they're looking at it. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I like starting off that way. Um, it makes it feel a little more official and less just chummy kind of a thing. But then I will build a little more rapport. I'll try to be a little more intentional. I'm not a big, hey, sit down and build rapport right away kind of a guy. I never was. But I'll try to get a little more laughs out of them throughout the financial inventory than I normally would um, just to kind of break down the barriers a little bit. Um, and then for social security number, I'll just say, Hey guys, so just so you know, there's no credit check anywhere throughout this process here. Um, but they will need your social to make sure you're not trying to commit fraud today. And then also that's how they're going to check your health. Make sure you're not lying about your health either. So go ahead with that when you're ready. So I'm just rolling through it. It's not a big deal. And then I'll share my screen be like, Hey, look, did, did that get right? Does that look right? You know, so that way they're not thinking I'm writing it down or something. 
So I'll share mm -hmm. my screen when I'm typing it in. Um, and then for, for banking info, uh, the word track I use for that is, um, so guys, uh, last thing on here, obviously we got to put down the banking info. Now don't worry, nothing comes out today because you're not approved yet. Uh, what we're doing though is we got to put that on the application for two reasons. Now, one is they're going to check during the underwriting process to make sure you're not committing fraud by using someone else's banking info. So they got to make sure your name's on the account. And then also they need to obviously get you the coverage if they're going to approve you. So that's how they'll do that as well. Nothing comes out today, obviously, but we're going to submit the application. If you're approved, we'll know here in a few minutes if you've been approved. Congrats. Awesome. Then it's going to come out in the next one to three days. and It'll be automatic for you guys going from there. So who do you bank with? I'll look up the routing while you grab the account number. So I'll roll, I'll roll through that. Um, and if you've, if you've done it right up until that point, you, you typically don't get too much pushback. Um, but yeah, that's that's my approach for, for both of those. I don't notice too, too much of a pushback. The main difference that I see with virtual is just the show, right? You know, that's, that's just a given. You just accept it. So get more leads, book more appointments, easier to do when you're virtual. Cause you don't have to, you know, drive to them and then, uh, and compensate for it that way. Uh, but as far as the closing rate, it's really similar. Um, that was a big transition mindset for me at first. I was trying to like make this big ordeal over it. Like, oh, I'm virtual now. So I got to rethink everything. Like, no, it's the exact same conversation. <laughs> That's why I love seeing them because that way I can joke around with them or see stuff in their house or make a joke about their dog or something. Um, it's the exact same thing, exact same thing. And like I said, I'll try to build a little bit more rapport throughout the financial inventory. But that was, that was a big shift at first. Well, not a big shift that I thought would be, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Now, do you, like, when you call them, if they don't answer, do you ever shoot them a text message to picture the lead, send that yep, over? Yep. So what I do is I'll say, okay, cool. I'll give you a, I'll give you a call at this time and we'll, we'll hop on zoom together. And then, uh, so look out for my, my number and I'll give them my phone number that I'll be calling from. So that way they, they know to expect it, uh, when they see it coming, um, I'll tell them about the reminder texts there. And then, um, and then, yeah, I'll call them, I'll triple dial, um, for the appointment, if, if they haven't answered, and then I'll shoot them a text, be like, hey, this is Matt Board for the mortgage protection, had you down for an appointment at this time, did you want me to text or email you the Zoom link? So it's not like, hey, are you coming? It's, hey, which is which do you prefer? And at that point, if they've forgotten about you, they're probably not <laughs> gonna mm -hmm. respond, but I'll probably get maybe 20% response on that. Like, oh, my bad, yeah, hopping on now, kind of a thing, um, where they thought they could get away with no showing you. <laughs> they're like, oh, okay, darn, he's gonna, He's going to track us down, but it's not a huge percentage, but 10 to 20% or so will respond to it. Okay. Um, now, do you, if people can't do Zoom, I mean, do you, will you take it over the phone? Do it right yeah, I phone? actually had a couple yesterday. Um, one, one was just an old single dude. Like I wasn't about to get him on Zoom. And then the other one was a construction worker um, and I could hear his fiance in the background. So I had him put me on speaker and uh, we were just making fun of him the entire time about having no clue how to work technology. <laughs> so we did it over the phone. Um, I normally, I wouldn't have preferred it, but it, for that one specifically, it was more of like a rapport building thing. Cause then I was like on the fiance side, like making fun of him about it the whole time. It's so, like sure. every chance I could get, I was like, yeah, that's why he doesn't know how to use zoom or, you know, stuff like that. Um, so I'll, I'll say probably 80% I do on Zoom and the other 20%, like I said, if I, if I can see their face, I want to, but sure. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend 10 minutes, you know, starting off the conversation with this huge frustrating ordeal of them not even knowing what the app store is and having to download it and stuff. Um, so it, it's a fine line, but I'll push it a little bit. And if it, if it ends up being too much of a hassle, I'll just be like, all right, tell you what I'll do. Normally they require that I see you, but we'll just do this over the phone and I'll pretend that I saw you and you're not trying to commit fraud. How's that sound? Like I'm doing them a favor kind of a thing. Yeah. Makes sense. What do you, so, I mean, you have a team of agents that, you know, you said a lot of them are still in person, right? What are yeah, a lot we've, of we've been good about switching over to hybrid a lot. Um, so I'd say probably most of our top producers are hybrid to some extent. Now, some of them do like, you know, two virtual appointments a week or something. So, but, but we have, we have made sure to, to do a good job implementing that in some way, shape or form with everybody. It just makes sense, right? If, if your lead flows down, just, just call some people, you know, um, it doesn't matter. So, um, so we've done a little bit better job at that, uh, going a little more hybrid. Um, but there's only probably four or five of us that are completely virtual all the time. Um, and there's probably 10 to 15 that are hybrid as far as like the top or full-time producers. Sure. What do you think is, 
you know, let's just, let's just talk about hybrid method or really any agent. What do you think is one of the biggest reasons agents struggle to get rolling in this business? Cause I mean, you've, you definitely have an opinion that matters, right? that much insurance, having a team doing that much volume. I mean, what are, what are some of the biggest things you see agents get tripped up on that don't allow them to, to get momentum and actually make this thing work? Sure, um, I think it would boil down to, and we can dive into it more, but I think it would boil down to what I've seen. And then what I did is overcomplicating everything. You know, they, they want to be an insurance professional. They want to be contracted with every single carrier. They want to know every product. And I speak, I say they, but I'm, I'm meaning me. Like I did the same thing. You know, um, we just, we try to overcomplicate it. When Bob dies, Mary gets a check. Okay, cool. That's it. And you can call your upline for, for which product to go to. And you have cheat sheets and all kinds of stuff to use in the home. It's, it's not complicated at all, but because it's so new for so many people, right? A lot of people haven't been 1099 or an entrepreneur before, right? A lot of people haven't invested in some type of thing like leads before they've made money. Um, a lot of people haven't sold insurance before, you know, so I feel like we, we come into it with so much hesitation and you just need to go all in, but I struggled on that at, at the beginning. So I try to help people through that process, like dumb it down, like, no, come on, let's just get you out there. You've got America, you've got prosperity. Let's go. <laughs> you've got everything you need. Um, that's going to cover 99% of people pretty much. Um, so let's just get out there and, and go help some people. Sure. That's cool. Um, so, and, I, and honestly, guys, if, if anybody has some questions, um, just drop them in the comments and we'll, we can unmute you and let you ask them. Um, no, that's, that's big, man. Like, so you said your, your ratio, your show ratio is around 40%, give or take on, on zoom. Sorry. I've got a bad connection on mine. Something about Zoom. Yeah, you said your, your show ratio is usually between, you know, 35, 40%. Okay. And I'm assuming you you definitely need to overcompensate on leads or at least get more than probably what you, what your, what's your opinion on that? I've heard people talk both ways about that. You know, you need more if you're selling virtual, but I've heard people say, no, you just got to resolve them all. What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, that's definitely, I feel like that's an opinion one and there's not, you know, there's a lot of stuff in FFL where it's like an obvious fact, <laughs> you know, that everyone's going to say the same thing. And there's some that you can kind of argue from both sides, but um, I would say I, I always have taken the, the abundance approach to this and it might not be the right approach, but that's, that's what I've always done. I'd rather, cause for me, if I'm trying to resolve every single freaking lead, I get stressed out. You know, I, it does something for me in my psyche to be able to tell the client that's being super annoying. Hey dude, just don't call that number again. Don't fill that out. Like don't waste anyone else's time. Like you obviously don't want this and just keep moving. Right. But if you only have so many leads, like you're stressing out, you're trying to convince yourself that they actually do want it. Now is just not a good time. Right. So again, this is opinion according to Matt. Right. I, I don't know if, if this can be backed up with fact, but that's what it does for me. If I know that I've got enough leads to book the number of appointments I need to make the amount of, you know, help the amount of families that I need to, like I'm, I'll be fine. And so that that's a big one for me because the, the mental part of this business is, has always been the biggest struggle and hurdle for me. And so I've had to work the hardest on that. And that's, that's one of the things I do. I'd rather spend a couple hundred bucks on leads to have a better mindset than be stressed out about having to resolve every single freaking lead and hear from people like that. Okay. Now, in terms of, I got a couple of questions here. So start with the first one. I mean, Matt, how many hours a week are you normally putting in this thing to, to get yourself in a position to write 30, 40 a month, you know, and also have a team growing, like okay. what's your schedule? Like, I was going to say that that could be a couple of questions. Cause there's one question of, you know, doing 30 to 40 a month <laughs> and then there's another question of building the team um i joke with agents i don't have a work schedule i just work <laughs> like it's life um but that's that's something that that i'm okay with and my wife of five years is okay with as well we kind of made that decision together like hey this is this is what we want we want to change our lives our children our future children's lives you know our, our legacy like integrity is what we're shooting for and and we've seen obviously what that takes we've seen plenty of people get there and you know and, and getting there so we knew what that would take and so dude i mean it's everything <laughs> yeah you get it you know it's it, it's all the time every day all the day and uh giving it everything i possibly got um 
but if you're just if you're asking that question as far as hey you know what kind of time frame should you expect to write 30 to 40 a month that's a different question if you're new you got to stop looking at the clock that was a big mistake i made when i came when i came in here you know i was i wasn't happy where i was at in the lawn care industry doing sales um and i was looking at other places but looking back i realized like every interview I had, like I was asking about work-life balance, like an idiot, <laughs> right? Like that's a great way to get a job. Like, Hey, how much time do I not have to work with you guys? Right. Um, and I took that mentality here. And I was like, Oh, I want weekends off. You know, I just want to be able to work the same amount of hours and make a little bit more money. Right. Um, but that's not, that's not how this works. There's a big learning curve for most of us here because it's all on you. You have nothing backing you up. It is all on you, but that's nice too. <laughs> because you can control you, you know, there's no outside variables. So uh, that being said, if you're brand, brand new, and I'll Gabrielle, I don't know how new you are in the business, but, uh, but if you're brand, brand new, don't look at the clock, please, for the love of God, do not look at the clock, just look at your activity. A dial day should be 15 plus booked appointments for the next 48 hours, or 600 plus dials. If you don't do one of those things on a dial day, you just didn't work hard that day. It might feel like you worked hard that day, right? <laughs> Especially coming from a job where you can clock in and kind of give it half half an effort, right? Like it might feel like you worked hard, but you didn't. That those are the numbers here that you have to expect to put in. Um, and then if you're not running eight appointments a day, then you're not working that that run day. You're not. So you got to work between those appointments. If you have five appointments, that's not a day. <laughs> you know, you're you're very part time. Sure. at that point so you have a lot of extra free time that you got to be dialing you got to be door knocking because there's a learning curve here and the, the faster you can get through that learning curve the faster you're going to make money consistently and that's what we all need is, is consistency in, in our life right no one can survive on a roller coaster permanently some people you know are more adapted at it than others but you, you got to get to where you know that you can pay your bills with a little bit extra every week in this business. And the sooner you can get there, that's when you can start work looking at the clock and looking at the hours, but you cannot look at the clock in this business, especially at the beginning. That's a good answer, dude. Um, and I'm gonna pair those two questions. Um, what type of lead flow are you recommending for your brand new agents to give them a good shot of success early? For sure, yeah, great question, Angelo. Um, I don't really have a cookie cutter this 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 answer to that i'm trying to customize it to the agent their schedule are they full-time are they part-time um are they local are they virtual um so if you're local i like to do um, a facebook final expense order paired with crm leads um, for a new agent because let's be real if you have 25 old people on facebook put down that they want information about being buried there's there's a sale there like, sorry, there is. If you if you call every one of them multiple times and then go knock on every single one of those doors, there is a sale there, guaranteed. Um, and then it'll also show me if they're willing to do that and if they're willing to call through internet leads and just get beat up, right? Because those no one's under the impression that that's internet leads are some kind of high quality people throwing your check their checkbooks at you when you call them right like especially if you're doing like the three months something a lot of them are just telling you hey I didn't fill that out I don't remember filling that out so you just got to know what you're getting into and what that client is right not that they're any worse or better than us as people but this is the type of person that's older on average less income on average less healthy on average and doesn't have any life insurance on average and they're on google filling out banner ads for it Right. So they just need someone to tell them what's happening. <laughs> you have to call them and say, Hey, you filled this out. Sorry if you don't remember, but you did. I have to bug you until this is complete. So I'm coming out there. You have any doctor's appointments tomorrow? Great. Morning or afternoon. Okay. See you tomorrow. I'm coming. Like you don't get an option. <laughs> they need someone to be that firm with them. Right. So that that's what I like to start a new agent off if they're local, because that way, they're going to show me if they're going to work or not. And if, in this business, if you're not going to work hard, now is not the right time. It's not to say that you can never, because I definitely didn't start off a hard worker. Um, I, my first two lead orders on the weekends when I was trying this out part-time, about 25 happy agent leads, called through them once, didn't door knock them. Like, <laughs> that's how hard I was working at, at the start. Like, I was not working that hard, you know. So um, not to say that if you don't start off working hard, you can't be successful, but that has to change. 
And so I'm looking for the person that's going to go, go door knock every one of those and going to burn through those internet leads, six, nine, 12 calls throughout the day. Because if you do that, you're going to book five, 10, 15 appointments, depending on you know how advanced you are on the phones by that point. Um, and then from there, now I know what I'm working with. Okay, is this person going to work hard or is this, just, or, or do we have to figure out how to even work hard first before we can, you know, really, really pursue it. And then if you're virtual, virtual, I can't even talk anymore. Um, if you're virtual, I prefer a second chance mortgage um, to start off um, along with some kind of a discount um, final expense type of a lead, um, just because you're going to be able to get a little more people on the phone. Um, and that way you can have a chance to one call close a few people um, or book appointments that way. And it opens up your possibilities because obviously second chance, they're finite, you know, so if you're just looking around you, there might not be a ton. But if if you're virtual, that opens up your whole state or if you have multiple uh, licenses, then you can you know look at different states there. So um, that's that's the general two approaches that I take. Again, it's not it's not cookie cutter, but that's that's kind of the thought process that I take. It's a good answer. Another good answer. Um, I appreciate that. What, um, dude, what, what changed for you though? What was that switch? Cause you said you came in, you bought 25 happy agent leads, called them one, said it didn't work. Then go door knock them. And then probably bought our batch of leads or said, this sucks. This doesn't work. Yep. And now you've come a long ways clearly, but what was that switch for you? You know, when you first started and you didn't work and then all of a sudden you, you flipped the switch and you're like this, let's go. What was yeah. that? Uh, unfortunately for me, there were multiple switches. <laughs> <laughs> in multiple areas of the business, you know? Um, so at the very beginning, I would say the first switch was understanding what hard work actually was, you know, cause I was salary plus commission. So I would, I would always hit my numbers. So I was always towards the top of the leaderboard. So I thought I was a hard worker. And then I come here and man, it exposed me, you know, cause then I didn't have a boss. I didn't have numbers or, you know, projections or requirements. And so it exposed me for the, the lazy, <laughs> the lazy guy that I was. Um, so that was the first switch. I just had to understand like what actual hard work meant <laughs> versus just clocking in and doing your job, so to speak. Right. Um, so that was the first switch that one, I, I would say it's a simple switch, but not an easy one. Right. Because if you've never had to work this hard at anything before, that's a big, you know, that's a big shift, but mm -hmm. anyone can do it. We all have that in us. Um, so that was the first switch. Um, I would say the next switch came about four months later. Um, and it was, it was a business mindset for me. So in July, so I started at 80%. So not a whole lot of wiggle room. Um, and I did 17 in July. 28 in August, 48 in September. So I started ramping up pretty quick. And then October was 14 <laughs> in a five week month. So that was a big wake up call. Um, and you would think, oh, you were good though, right? Because you had extra money from September. No, I had spent that. Silly you for thinking too highly of me, right? Like, <laughs> no, because I, I didn't do anything like big and crazy, but I had gotten sloppy and it was all just in one account. Just if I made money, I made money. And if I didn't, I didn't, there was no business. There was no me, you know, it was, it was just all one pot and I didn't see this as a business, which was foolish because it is right. And so that was a, that was another switch for me was understanding, no, this is a business. If I made 10 grand that week, that was the business, not me. Right. So I'm going to pay my bills, but I'm going to leave it in the business. So I'm not freaking stressed out when I do nothing the next week. Right. Um, so that was a big switch, just literally seeing this as a business versus some kind of W2 type of thing. Um, and then the second part of that um, was understanding the importance of leads and consistency there. Um, because what I had done in August and September was I discovered the magic that is second chance mortgage leads. But at that point, you know, two years ago, there, there was only so many second chance mortgage leads, at least that our team knew of. And so the ones that we knew of ran dry in all the areas I was running. And I didn't see that coming. And so that's what happened from September going into October. I just ran out of leads <laughs> that I was running. And so what I did is I had to get the credit card out and do a lot of swiping. And that's what I did. Cause at that point I knew the answer. The answer was leads and hard work. And so got the credit card out, did a ton of swiping, 
and uh, kept working. Then November was 48, December was 53, two of my biggest months because I knew what to do, um, but I had to learn about the business side of this, make sure that I was never just draining the account because that's stressful. You know, we've all been there having to operate with no money personally or in the business due to one reason or another, but that's fixable too here. You know, there's no other place that I know of you can go out in a day and completely turn it all around, right? But it's not going to turn around if you don't go out there that day. So that was, that was the second big switch. Did, did somebody call you up for that? Or was that more of like a self-discovery thing? Like you just noticed it wasn't working or did someone be like, dude, if you don't change, this is going to get ugly? Um, no, I had to learn that the hard way. I was reaching out a lot. That was one of the things I'm glad I did, but just that that didn't get caught in time. I wasn't being open about my lead flow enough. I was just kind of doing my thing. And you know, my mentor was seeing the numbers. So he was like, oh, okay, yeah, he's, he's making progress. But I wasn't really... Uh, reaching out to anyone like I should have been about my lead flow and making sure that it was well thought out. And so that, that was that, that was a big hiccup. Okay. Now your, all right. So with your personal schedule, okay. I like three questions. So your personal schedule, um, are you, do you book appointments for the same day usually, or do you usually try to push them out yeah, no, no, I'll do, I'll do same day appointments. If it's a, uh, if it's like a couple that I get one of them on the phone and they're at work, I'll book an evening appointment for sure. Um, but that's not typically what I'm going for. Typically I'm going for something in the next 24 hours. Uh, but if that's, if that's available, then absolutely. I will do that. Cool. I, I don't like booking more than 24 hours out uh, ever, but especially for virtual. Got it. Um, and then how many leads do you like to have, you know, per dial day, per week? What is, what is a good number to look at there? Yeah, great question. But I think you're coming at the question from a, a wrong perspective, Catherine, instead of looking at a number of leads, I would look at how much you're investing and how much time you're putting back into it. Um, because if you spend more on a lead, that just indicates that it's probably going to be easier to book it, right? By rule of thumb, the more you spend on a lead, the easier it is to book the appointment, right? So that means if you spend a certain amount on, you know, like a mortgage or an expensive, like, uh, like a $40 final expense mail or something, right. It might be easier to book, but the bottom line is top producers spend 2000 a week. So if you, if you want to be a top producer, or if you need 8,000 plus issue paid for the week, you need to spend two grand in leads. That's just, that's just a given. If you're going to work extra freaking hard to milk everything out of every lead that you can, maybe you can get by with 1500, maybe a thousand if you're lucky, but I don't think, I don't think that's sustainable. So instead of looking at a number of leads, I would look at the number of how much you're spending on them because in this, in this business, when you're new, you might two to three X what you spend in leads as far as gross deposits. Um, and then when you're a little more experienced, you'll get closer to four. When you're good, you'll do five. If you're really good, you might do six going on seven X of what you spend on leads to issue paid. I've always been around the four to five ish. Mark, and I know that, so that's fine. Now I know my number. Now I know what I need to spend. And so that's why I do two to 2,500 a week in leads right now, because I know what I need to write to keep the business going and, and to keep keep running at a high level. So um, yeah, I, it's a good question. I see where you're coming from, but I would, I would ask it differently. How much can I spend every week on leads to do what I need to do? And so if you're spending you know a thousand bucks on discounted internet leads, it's going to be a lot of work. You're definitely going to want call tools for that because you're going to be burning through a lot, but it's just going to be more time, but you still have to put it in. Cool. And then, you know, where are you getting second chance mortgage leads at the CRM or do you get them from another vendor? For sure. Yeah, no. So there's vendors out there and you can literally just Google it. That's how we found three or four of our current lead vendors is just by searching for them. They're all the same. Like no one's going to, they're just reselling fresh mortgage leads. So they're all the same. I don't really care where I get them from, from, from at least from my experience, I guess I should say. Um, uh, a lead is a lead, especially when it comes to mortgage protection. Um, but yeah, so the CRM, especially if you're virtual, you can click on the state and it'll show you how many second chance mortgage leads are there. So because I'm virtual, I have a lot more access than if I was just you know running in a two hour radius around my, my county. So, um, so yeah, no, majority is out of the CRM. Um, but when I was in the field, I would just kind of keep tabs with a couple different vendors to make sure that, uh, that if, if they had anything come available, that, that they would. 
cool cool man anything else you want to throw in i don't think there's any more questions a lot of good stuff man i appreciate it yeah no you um a lot of good questions come from you and the team um i would just i would just encourage everyone um you know whether you want to be a top producer or just successful how and what you need this to be that's one of the things i love about ffl is it can be whatever you want it to be right you don't have to build a team you don't have to recruit you don't have to hit hall of fame you can use this opportunity to do whatever you need to do for you and your family um, but i would recommend no matter what your goal is first of all have a defined goal don't just be here to be here have a defined goal so i don't care if you're a stay-at-home parent a younger single person married with kids like whatever whatever situation you are in life whatever you want out of this thing, have a very clearly defined goal because anyone that's been here any length of time can help you work the numbers backwards. If you know how much you need to work and, or make, excuse me, then a mentor can help you work all the numbers backwards, how many leads you need and all that. Um, and then from there, um, once you have a clearly defined goal, just focus on our company's motto, humble and hungry. You can't have a big business and a big ego. And so that's something I work really hard on. Um, because I feel like as humans, we default to the opposite of both of those things. We default to wanting to take credit and wanting to be seen as successful and, you know, wanting to be kind of prideful. And we default to kind of lazy and not wanting to work hard. And so that's why I feel like it's such a simple but profound model. Like you, Sean Mike says all the time, right? Ty, you've, you've probably heard him tell you more than I've heard him say it, right? You can't have a big business and a big ego. And so I've, I've really worked on making sure that, and not that anything I've done is, is all that impressive anyway, plenty of people, like, I don't, I don't think I'm the top at anything in this business, but we'll start telling ourselves we are, right? We'll believe the compliments or we'll believe that we're crushing it. It's like, no, like you're just, this is a good opportunity and you're just going to work, right? So, so really focus on implementing that humble and hungry aspect and mindset in your business and have a defined goal. And if you do that, it's going to be a lot less stressful because you'll know where you're going and you'll get there a lot quicker because your ego is not in the way. And if you're hungry, you're going to be pursuing it like you should every day. So I think that's what I would kind of end up on. Nice, man. I appreciate that answer. Appreciate the transparency. Um, I think that I think that's all. Actually, there's been one more in there. Oh, yeah. Explain how you use a dialer. If you have someone calling if needed, you know, 600 people a day, like, do you use a dialer or does your dialer use a dialer, an auto dialer? Oh, got it. So, Brian, are you talking about like software or like a person? I think so. In general, like if I had 600 people to dial, I'd throw them in a dialer. Where are you getting those leads to dial out the 600? Are you just calling from weeks and weeks past? Obviously, just a cumulative. Uh, sure. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying because I said, Hey, 600 dials on a dial day. That's, that's what you're, where you're getting the 600 from. Okay. I think, I think you misunderstood. So that's not 600 leads. That's 600 dials. So every time the phone rings, that's one. So gotcha. if I have one lead, that's going to get triple dialed. So that's three dials every single time I call them. And especially if you're working like a second chance or an internet lead, you're going to do, you're going to call them three times in a row, morning, afternoon, and evening at least that sounds excessive but remember the type of person that we're talking about here they need your help and you're gonna have to go way overboard because their phone's already getting blown up so you're gonna have to set yourself up apart from all the other people blowing up their phone for any number of reasons as well um so that's where you're gonna get that you know so in other words if you have 200 leads some of them are going to answer anyway right so that would be enough to get you to 600 um as far as software goes, uh, obviously we have that deal with phone burner where you can get the base plan for like 105 a month. Um, that's really good. That works with anything that you can export into a spreadsheet. So the CRM works for that. Um, any type of lead vendor that uploads leads into a, a spreadsheet for you, like a Google sheet that works with phone burner. Um, and then if you're really working a ton of leads, like if you're going hard on internet leads, I recommend call tools. Um, that's a, that's a really, really cool software uh, that's even cheaper than foam burner. Um, but it's its own CRM and you can upload leads in there and it'll, it'll dial out, uh, up to, well, it can be a lot of numbers, but it'll dial out two calls at a time and you don't actually hear it ringing. Uh, you'll just sit there in silence and then it'll go boop. And then that means the person answered and said something. Did you like that sound effect? Boop! I can do it again. <laughs> that was money. <laughs> but yeah, no, it just it just does this little sound, 
and that means that someone picked up the phone and said hello. So you don't actually hear the hello, you just hear the beep. So that one helps you stay sane a little bit more because you don't actually hear the buzzing of the dialing all the time. Um, and so if you have hundreds and hundreds of leads, or if you're just getting started on internet leads or something, that's really cool because the bottom line is you just have to burn through them. And phone burn can help you do that, but it's only calling one person at a time and you have to listen to it ringing. So if you're using, you know, if you're doing anywhere from, I would say 30 to maybe 60 leads at a dial day that you're working of any kind, phone burner would be plenty. If you're doing more like 80, 100 or more, you're going to want call tools because um, it's going gonna, it, to gonna set up a campaign. You just set it to run and then you'll hear, you'll hear that noise. Um, you remember it from before. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then you just start rolling into it. Um, but it'll help you talk to way more people because that's the trick with internet leads, right? You just, you don't talk to a lot of people sometimes, you know, if you're, if you're doing, you know, 80 to hundred dials an hour, you might talk to five or six people. And if you're not that good on the phone, you might only book one, maybe two. That's a long day, right? But if you can dial 200, 250 dials an hour with two lines going out each, each time you're going to talk to 10, 15 people an hour. So that's going to, that's going to increase just your, your bottom line activity a lot more. So, um, and then if you're using like a, a, a physical person to dial the phone to set appointments for you, a couple thoughts on that, that I had to go through. Uh, one is they don't care. They do not care about your leads or your money, right? <laughs> it's a job to them, right? To you, it's your money, your leads, your business, but that, to them, it's a job. So they're not going to care. And they're going to be about half as good as you are on the phone. So if you suck on the phone and you want a dialer, you're going to be out of the business within a couple of weeks. I'm not speaking to you directly, but just, you know, that thought process, it's going to be bad. Um, I, I've seen that for one or two agents. Um, my dad actually tried that. <laughs> he got into this a couple months back. He's like, I want to try it, but I don't want to dial. I was like, all righty, <laughs> all righty, here you go. Here's, here's where you go to get a dialer. He did. I mean, he was out within a couple months because he didn't train them at all because he couldn't because he didn't know how to dial. <laughs> And he's spending all this money on leads. They're not booking him any appointments. He's getting frustrated. And I'm like, telling him, like, dude, this is the answer, but it's all right. Like it, it, it just didn't work out. It's fine. It's not for everyone. But um, a lot of people, they hear, oh, someone can book appointments for you. And they just think like it's a magical transaction that happens where you spend money and magically you have all these solid appointments on the calendar. Unfortunately, I've not met that, that vendor or that company that exists, but uh, um, they, they work great if you're if you're real busy and you want to you want to run tons of appointments and you're good on the phones you can train someone else and it doesn't have to be someone foreign it can be someone you know local I just recommend training them a lot understanding that they're an employee and then bonusing them not by appointments that they book but but off of sits because that's what you're paying for you're paying to talk to people not to just have names on your calendar so if you bonus pay them a, as low as you possibly can hourly but pay them very generously when you sit with people and give them a high bonus for that. Cause then if you do that, dude, if you're sitting with 20 people a week and you don't close more than 10, like that's on you. Right. And so that'll pay for itself. So you can afford to bonus, you know, significantly on stuff like that. So those are a couple thoughts on just all the different terms of dialer. <laughs> cool, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. I think that that's all we got, man. Thanks. I took a ton of notes here, so I'm excited to implement some of the stuff. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm always watching you guys and kind of, uh, kind of using you as benchmarks. I'm always competing with compassion and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking to compete with you next. So, so we'll see. Evan's not here for me to talk crap. I was, I always tell him that anytime I see him, I'm like, bro, I'm coming for you. So <laughs> we're right there now. And then Titans are next. So you'll, you'll see inception coming up for you, but yeah, cool. I, I love watching what you do on content, social media and, your, your team, you got it. You guys have a ton of killers. So we're always looking at your stuff for, for training and all that. So I appreciate you guys. Cool. Appreciate it, man. Well, thanks for popping on here. Let's keep rolling, man. All right. Later guys. Good luck this weekend.